There's one right there. Dang it. Old school Texas rig offshore. Sometimes just gets it done. There you go. Oh, come here, buddy. Thank you. Just like that. Hooked right there in the corner of the mouth. One thing that I'll tell you real quick here that is very key with this technique is the hook. The hook's been out a little bit. That is a number five, a five aught VMC wide gap hook. It's a little bit lighter wire. But when you're making long casts, fishing big 10 inch worms like this one right here, it's really important on your hookup ratio. Good fish. Get a couple pictures of this guy. As things have sort of transitioned offshore, I feel like, you know, new baits come along and there's baits that are trends and then there's baits that are just stand the test of time. And for me, uh, a worm that just that profile, for some reason, offshore when it gets hot in the summertime, that streamlined profile, I don't even know exactly if they really feel like it's a, if they feel, I think it's a worm. It's just something, a profile that gets bit. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, think back to the days of Larry Nixon. I mean, he's been throwing a dang worm for years. It's a big deal. I mean, there's times when, you know, you could throw all those special swim baits and all that stuff, but just a standard old worm, we'll get the job done. So my setup for this rig is, is pretty simple. This is a 3 8 ounce flipping weight, and, and, and I do like to peg it because what the thing is, is, is if the year goes on, that faster fall tends to make those fish react a little bit better. So. That's sort of my setup, the 5 aught VMC wide gap hook, a little bit lighter, lighter wire, but that's the big thing about that hook is it allows you to really hook them good. You gotta pay attention because you will, you could bend it out on a 7.6 heavy, I'm throwing 17 pound suffix advanced line, but it just hooks them really good. There's a lot of hooks out there on the market, you know, from, from heavy straight shanks to heavy flipping hooks. But for me personally, it, you, what happens is when you're fishing from that distance offshore, you won't get that hook point, that barb past, you know, through the fish. And so you don't really hook them that great and you end up losing them. I've done it so many times. And so it's frustrating when that happens and you get the bite in the tournament or you get the bite just fun fishing and you lose the fish because you can't, you know, really, you got to really yank on them when you have that heavy wire. So I think that lighter wire really does a lot, a lot better when you're fishing from further distance. Now, if I'm just flipping a worm or something like that, you can go up and gauge and hook, but when you're making a long cast, trying to stay off those fish, offshore fish, the lighter wire seems to do better. You just gotta be mindful that you could straight, put, at least bend the hook out. So you gotta take it a little bit easier, take your time with the fish, but normally the fish is gonna be hooked pretty good. As far as worm selection, there's a lot of different worms out there on the market. Um, you know, I normally try to stay in that eight to 12 inch. You know, 12 inches is a little bit on the large size. I would say eight to 10. You know, you don't need that giant worm. I do think sometimes that what ends up happening is, you get to 12 or 14 or whatever, you a bigger profile worm, more, more a thicker body, you tend to miss more fish. Um, I don't necessarily think it may, the bigger the worm means the bigger the bite. So the thing is, when, when selecting a worm, the big thing that is a huge deal is how big the profile is of the worm and then how big the tail is. If you have an eight inch worm that has a big giant tail on it and it's a fat body, well, heck, it's, it's, it's just gonna do just about what a, maybe a 12 inch worm is gonna do, just because it's so long, it doesn't mean that it's gonna catch all them giant fish. So right here I have the, the worm that I'm throwing today is a little nine, it's a, I think it's a nine and a half actually. This is a, a Guggenbaits Mondo worm. This is a, a plum color, typical offshore. Normally I'm gonna throw your, your plums when, when the water's a little bit more stained. A foot to two foot of visibility. When the water's cleaner, I get you your green pumpkins, uh, you know, your watermelon reds especially when you get around grass, something like that. Red bugs and plums are great, great when that water's a little bit stained. So there's a couple different retrieves that I go through when I'm throwing a worm, you know. If there's a big school of fish out there, which this place is sort of some isolated fish here and there, I'm dragging around a little bit more, I'll actually pull and, and hop my worm. So sort of like a stroking a jig, but I'm not, I'm not as violent. I'm just sort of popping it up, letting it fall to the bottom, pop it up, let it fall to the bottom. And what happens is with that little bit heavier weight, I'll even go to a half or three quarter if I really feel like, you know, those fish, I need something to make those fish react. That's, that's just, as it's sort of falling down there real fast, it doesn't have a lot of resistance. You know, like a, a crawl is gonna have a lot more resistance as you pull it up, it's gonna fall a little bit slower on a heavier weight. Well, this worm just has that little tail, that little ribbon tail just 
shaken. So I think that that's something that's really key in getting those fish to bite, that faster fall. Now, on this particular place right here, I'm really just taking my time, I'm dragging along, it's just a slow and drag. You just drag around, just drag him around, and a lot of times you're just waiting for that one to go doop doop. The one thing that I do, I will tell you, from, from my experiences is worm fishing in general, it seems to me that you need to sort of let the fish have it a little bit. Uh, it, it, it's not like a jig bite, where if you get a jig bite, one bites it, thump, they got it. Especially the longer worms, you need to let those fish, when they go, when they bite it, it goes doop doop. I'll give them a little bit of line, a one, two, three, and then set the hook. That is, that is definitely been the best way I've seen to, to hook a fish and get a good hookup ratio on those fish and get them hooked in the roof of the mouth because it's just that elongated worm really just takes them a little while to eat it. It's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger profile. You know, the good thing about a worm is you don't have to normally worry about those fish dropping it as much. You know, they're a little bit more forgiving when they bite it. They're normally going to hold on to that bait a little bit longer. So that's something that it, it, it took, I still to this day, every once in a while, I'll be fishing in a tournament and I'll hop that worm and one will go, boom, they'll bite it and I'll set the hook and I'll miss them because I just, it just, I just have to tell myself, be patient, count to two or three, reel down and set the hook. And, and normally I would say 90% of the fish that if you wait and set the hook, you're gonna get those fish in the boat. All right, I'm letting this fish just got a bite. So I'm gonna reel down, make sure I get, follow through on my hook set. There's one right there, not a big one. There's one right there, no doubt. All right, not the biggest fish, but letting that fish have it a little bit, setting the hook. So we'll try to catch his, his daddy. I'm always constantly trying to figure out, you know, a new hook, a new setup, perfect something that I've, you know, maybe worked on a little bit. You know, hey, this maybe this was the way I used to like it, but found out there's a better way. There's always new hooks coming out, new things happening, new trends that are being set. And I think that's what really you gotta stay on top of all that. And even though as old school as a worm is, sometimes, you know, you can learn learn a lot of new stuff on an old trick, you know, and that's what it is, an old technique that's been catching bass for years. It's uh, something that you experiment with and just a hook really does make a huge difference. And that's when those fish bite it, I feel pretty confident that I'm gonna get them in the boat. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Got us one. Another one on the worm. Come on, Bubba. Good post spawner. I don't mind, hey, I don't mind you don't fight. There you go. That's exactly what I'm looking at right there. Good fish, but look at where that hook is. Okay, right through the meat, long cast, that fish is not coming off. Look at that, just straight pegged. That's the way I like to hook them. That, that right there is a good tournament fish. Good Mondo worm, heavier weight, old school technique, still gets it done. <laughs>